We made it to Friday, everybody, and welcome to Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore, and Mo hey, from 100.3 The Bull is in the house. Thanks for having me, Derek. Welcome to the show. You are a friend of Houston Life, and uh, it's great to see you because it's been a while. You know what, and it's been a little bit crazy. Uh, rodeo seems to kind of take over me. It's because you go every single day. Every Maybe day. that's the problem, Every right? day, every night, get up and do my radio show. 5 till 10 every morning. Wait, so explain how this actually works because you go to bed so early because you wake up so early, okay, so right? so except during rodeo season, we do not go to bed early. It doesn't work out that way because the concerts don't start till 9 o'clock during the week, which right. is usually my bedtime yeah. during like normal life. But during rodeo, it's just a mess. You just have to kind of just keep going. Okay, well, you're rolling with like it very train. well. Yes. And look, you, I mean, you look fresh as a daisy. Very sweet. It's fraudulent. <laughs> <laughs> It takes a she village. You can fall asleep at any moment, folks. So just prepare yourselves. Okay, we're going to get back into some of your rodeo activities because I know you just judged a really great food contest oh yesterday. Goodness. I'm sorry. I know I everything it. you need to know about rodeo food. But let's talk a little bit about you because people, of course, know and love you from listening to your Thank golden you. voice on the radio. But I understand you had started out with the desire to work in TV, but then yes. you told your mom that pretty just doesn't happen at 3 a.m. Okay, guys, let's talk about this. So I was in high school doing television, loved it. Went into college thinking that's exactly what I wanted to do. Mm. Found out that sometimes when you do TV... It's not so fun. It's not so fun. It's raining or you're at like a scene in the, in the middle of night and you have to be on and beautiful. And so my mom would be like, mm, maybe try something else. When was this that photo? That is my senior picture. The Look at you. The skinny days. Still have the fro. Oh, please. You but look I'm exactly rocking the same. it. And then I hosted a lot of stuff. So I got super comfortable in front of a camera with what? a microphone. That's a mascot from um, the Indianapolis hockey team. Oh, okay. I was just yes. going to ask. And then that was those are my very first headshots. Are they like glamour shots? Headshots for trying to get a job. Look at you. What do you think? Do you I like mean, the straight hair better, or is it? I like it both. I okay. mean, your hair is naturally curly, right? It's, yeah, there's nothing you can do about it, especially if you live in Houston. It's like, own it. I have a great lady who just knows how to do curls, and she helps Isn't me Isn't it funny? You have naturally curly hair, and you want to straighten it, but people with straight hair want to curl their hair. Isn't that the realest? My sister has naturally curly hair, too, mm -hmm. and, and younger. And your nieces and have my nieces curly, do. beautiful hair, Aww. but she knows how to work their hair. You need a mom like that. You, you need a mom who knows how you to work really the curls. Do. My nieces yep. are probably watching the show right now hey, because girls. they're with my mom. Hi, Own mom. your Hi, curls. curls. Own the curls, Own embrace mm -hmm. it. Yeah, and figure it out. The sooner you do, the better. So you decided that the 3 a.m. TV schedule was maybe not what you wanted. Yeah, about you that. So went instead, I get up at 3:30 a.m. every morning and do radio. But the kicker is, I don't have to look beautiful in the morning. You can wear a baseball cap. No one can see me. A lot of yoga pants. It's fine. But it's people great. really can technically see you, though. Yeah, we do a lot of Facebook on... lives, a lot of online stuff. So yeah, they're seeing me. I just am too super comfortable with it. Does your alarm ever not go off and you accidentally okay, sleep so, in? So uh, one time, um, it was after a Lady Gaga concert. I went the whole time. You can't leave during a concert, especially when you're loving. So uh, <laughs> I overslept. You, and what happened? You missed the radio show? My uh, co-hosts are calling. They think it's hilarious. They knew that I was out the night before. So. Oh, yeah. man. That, that's one of my biggest fears, it's sleeping terrifying. in. terrifying. But now I have an alarm clock in another room, so I have to actually physically get up and go to it. So. You know what? That's a good strategy. I've tried that before, but I just get up, go to the other room, turn it off, get and go back, back to bed. <laughs> they also have those alarm clocks, you know, with wheels on them. You have to chase it. You have it. to chase it around the, mm. the room. They have wheels, and each one sort of goes a different direction. So the alarm goes off. Your alarm clock falls off the side and table and rolls around. To find it. And then you trip and you break your leg. That'll wake you up. Disaster. Okay, so big news in the Mo land. Oh, yeah. uh, you just got engaged. I did. Okay, oh you got to tell us the story. Yes, of course. Okay, so so who is the lucky guy? I met him briefly one night. Yes, we call him the plumber on the radio show, right? Um, there's a funny story about that. He was sitting in my kitchen. One of my best friends walked upstairs in my house to come over for dinner, and she was like, "Who is this man?" And I was like. Or he said, I'm the plumber. Like, he was just he was at just the house a working. Job. Yeah, but he actually was a guy I was dating. So that's our engagement picture, and then that's our engagement oh surprise gosh. party. He pulled off two surprises. I hate surprises. I thought I was going to throw up, Derek. Oh. Like, the anxiety of a surprise is more than I can handle. It's fun. Brandon hates surprises, twice. too. But aren't you glad that he did, though? Yeah. Did, wasn't the payoff it worth it? Perfect. He flew out of state to come surprise me. Like, I had no idea he was going to be there. Oh my gosh. I know, the sweetest guy. So romantic. Yeah. But is it strange that you like talk about him on the radio mm -hmm. and people now knows, know him as They're the like, plumber? Where's the plumber? Is he a plumber? He's not really a plumber, but he plumbers are cool guys. He'll so. probably forever be known as the, the plumber. plumber. Mm -hmm. 
he's okay. cool with it. It's good to have a nickname, like a genuine one. I agree. I think a nickname yeah. is so flattering. I need one. Well, you have one. I mean, Mo. Mo. It's yeah. perfect. It's well, we're so glad you're here filling in for Courtney Thank today. You, Courtney uh, has the day off, but we're glad you're here, Mo. We always love having you. You bring best. such great energy. We have so much And fun. as always, we have a great show coming up. So first of all, we're going to chat about estimating the value of your home. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home, from finding the right agent to what you need to know before buying or selling, we got you covered. Plus, how one local artist is creating custom pieces that shine during Rodeo Houston. And we're taking you inside True Colors New on a little later in the show. Okay, and you know, anything can happen here on Houston uh -oh. Life. <laughs> later today, we're going to be breakdancing. No one told me about this. Well, uh, we're going to try to breakdance, but you know, it turns out Houston has a huge breakdancing community. It's a big okay. deal. I didn't some know. Some of the best of the best are here. You're going to meet All one right, of them. Let's do it. But first, you know, Houston is known for some of the best restaurants around and award winning places to eat. We're known it, like throughout the world for having great places to eat. Yeah. So, Yelp just released its top 100 places to eat in Texas. I'm excited. I'm excited about this. So I checked out this list. Okay, if, let's if see you want to visit our website, HoustonLife.tv, you can see the full list, mm -hmm. or you can obviously go to Yelp. But what I like about this list is I don't know these. I don't know these restaurants. And it's super diverse. Like you're seeing a lot of different types of food, right? Like hot dogs are on that list. Exactly. And pokey, which is now a huge the thing. Best. We're seeing pokey favorites. shops popping up all over mm -hmm. the city. But check out the list on your screen. And again, if you want the full list, you can visit our website, Houston. HoustonLife.tv. Speaking of food, by the way, the Golden Buckle Foodie Awards, that's what happened yesterday. We briefly mentioned it at the yes. top of the show today, but explain yes. to our viewers what that is. Derek, I was judging rodeo carnival food for four hours oh, yesterday. Yeah. Oh, so four we hours. test a little bit of it, just like a little bite, and they tell you to kind of pace yourself. Oh. It's a marathon, not a sprint, okay? And you're tasting the foods, everything you can find in the midway, then we judge them, and they get awards. So you'll walk around through the midway in the carnival and you'll see that they have plaques and stuff. What are you carrying over your okay, shoulder Okay, Derek, there? that was the best thing that I ate and it actually placed first in the um, classic fair food category. It is um, from the candy factory. It's called Hot Cheeto Cotton Candy. Hot Cheeto Cotton Candy. It was candy. the best thing I ate Hot Cheetos are today. having a moment. They They're are. Those right and now. Fruity Pebbles. A lot of Fruity Pebbles on the list. Those were crack fries. As they oh, call them. from Midway Gourmet, mm -hmm. from Biggie's. Um, and this thing right here that you're seeing is a Dole Whip ice cream from the Nitro guys. That's a little um, taco. You see what they did there? It's a taco. Clever, Wait, right? Wait, so you can eat, what? what is the, the green The shell part? is a waffle cone that's oh, it is dyed a cone. green. One, those are the, my three favorite things that I had out there oh, yesterday. Oh my goodness. No, um, those are fried nacho balls. So <laughs> everything you love about nachos in a compact, easy to eat while you're walking around the rodeo kind of deal. The cheese and the jalapenos, okay. You get down on it, right? Yeah, I'd be digging it. It's amazing, everything you love. Well, and because you've been going to rodeo, this is your fourth year, fourth year. and you go every single every day. I mean, so day. that means you've been to literally dozens. I've tried it all, is what I'm saying. you tried I'm it all. And I'm a connoisseur, so if you need any help, just text me, you guys can find me on Instagram. I'll tell you right where it is. What would you choose as your top item? Would it be the Hot mm -hmm. Cheetos cotton candy? That was the new thing this year. I think everyone's gonna be totally into it. You have to go to the carnival and get it. Okay. Just trust me, I'm not even a sweets person, but the fiery with the sweet, next level. You're okay. gonna love it. The sweet, our producer Kat, you know, every once in a while we put her to the test. Uh-oh. And uh, th there's nothing on earth that she won't eat. That, I mean, she could stuff the hottest pepper in her face like and that. she'd... Really? Can yeah. you handle it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into it. See, I like hot foods. They Fire. immediately make me start sweating and, you no, know... No, that's good for your metabolism. Get you going, Derek. You need it. But my stomach doesn't love it later in the day. About that. We'll just... Let me tell you what happens after that. four hours of judging food from the carnival. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Is a lot. Are you going to tell us or not? <laughs> it was just intense. I, d I haven't eaten yet all day because I can't take it anymore. No more food. I'm not interested in eating. <laughs> Should I stop asking questions? <laughs> no, actually, I heard that you know a lot about the fair food as well at Rodeo Houston. You know, I do. So obviously, like, there are a lot of foods you can enjoy at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. But, mm -hmm. you know, fried foods. Okay, there's a whole a category deal. for fried foods that we judged yesterday. So a lot of different things. But it's so easy to just fry anything. There's these guys out there, and that's what they want to do, find the most creative thing to fry, and that's what the fair is all about. Yeah, well, like Oreos fried and Twinkies, Oreos, Snickers Twinkies. bars. I had fried cheesecake yesterday. Um, there's some fried brisket balls that you're going to love. 
Okay. I'm just telling you. Okay, well, as long as we're chatting about fried foods, uh, we got to introduce you to a guy who we've known here at Houston mm -hmm. Life for a little while. His name is Dominic Palmieri of Biggie's. It's Midway Gourmet, but the food okay. stand is Biggie's. All right. They had those caramel crack fries you just showed that us. Was them. Okay, well, mm -hmm. I paid him a visit so he could show me some of the newest carnival treats on the menu. You know, rodeo is an amazing time of year where everybody comes together in this community and they all want to graze when they come to the rodeo. <laughs> yes, so, they do. This is one of our newest items. This is called the Caramel Crack Fry. This is an order of fries. And we're going to go ahead now. We're going to make it so much better. We're going to hit it. Oh, my with gosh. Nice, butter. Warm, melted butter. All right. We're going to give this a little stir, just like this here. And did I hear you correctly? You said caramel crack fries. Caramel crack fries. This right here, we have a little extra. Coarse granular sugar. sugar right here. This is on you. That kind of gives it the crack. Oh man. We're gonna toss these up just like this. Look at that. Now, you ready for this? Here it comes. Here it comes. Now we're gonna give it the carnival magic. And this alone looks delicious, but you just keep adding layers. What you got there? The this caramel? here is a sea salt caramel sauce. Look at this right here. Get in there tight. Oh, man. For all of you at home, this is with your smell of vision. You can <laughs> smell the cinnamon and that sugar, Yum. and that butter. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make it really fun. Dude, it just keeps getting better and better. And we're gonna put some ice cold whipped cream and then we're gonna hit it with some fruity pebbles, just like that. Now the whole, the whole inspiration behind this was when we were kids, we used to go to Wendy's and we used to dip our fries in the Frosties. The Frosty, I did the same thing. This has now come full circle. Listen, Only, that's even better. I think so because you got the component of that ice cold whipped cream, the crunch of the uh, of the Fruity Pebbles, but the fries have that little bit of saltiness, mm. but then you got that cinnamon and sugar. It's amazing, we, oh, love, we love doing this. That's unbelievable. Then Dominic took me from the sweet to the savory. A signature carnival item is, of course, the corn dog. But you, Dominic, you guys have a special twist yes. on it. I say there's no weenies here. This is a gourmet pecan smoked sausage that we then put into this beautiful golden batter. You can see this right here. Man, How long is that this. thing? Like this is 14 inches long, and it's a big, big, big corn dog. But the thing is, is it has the snap of the sausage. It's meaty. And look at this. When it comes out, look how gorgeous this one here is right here. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some more magic on it. Okay. Ready? We're going to come over here and we're going to put some hot melted cheddar cheese on this. Oh, man. Yep, just like that. Isn't that beautiful? And then let's give it some magic. The hot right Cheetos. Right now, flavor, the kids, the millennials, even the adults, everybody is loving spicy. Crunchy, flaming hot Cheetos are just really in right now. But take a look at that. The size of that prize, that's amazing right there. Oh, man. And you know what? This is still steaming hot. Is it safe to take a bite? It is safe to take a bite. Okay. And by the way, we should point out we're at Biggie's, and this is like, Biggie's is your baby, right? Biggie's is the baby. This is it right here. It's going in. Mmm. You know Hot Cheetos, it's a thing at Channel 2. Absolutely, Hot People Cheetos. People love their are, Hot Cheetos. Yeah, they're hot, no pun intended, right? Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to finish this when this cools yeah. down a little bit, but we got to talk about these fried Let's Oreos. Talk about this. What would the rodeo be without fried Oreos, right? But now you can get it in a beautiful rodeo hat. There's 15 Oreos in here. Feeds an entire family. Uh, I want to tell you that Oreos became really popular about 10 years ago, and they never went away. They just keep coming, and it's a favorite. There's even a, a National Oreo Day on March 6th, and I'm gonna tell you that people come to eat Oreos all day long. And this, by the way, this happens to be, by coincidence, my favorite fried food item at Rodeo Houston. Dominic, great to see you. Thank you for showing us inside your food truck. And guys, I'm just gonna let you take one last look at these Oreos, because in just a couple minutes, they're gonna be in my belly. You better have one with you too. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Good, huh? Cheers. I think I'm, like, I've just fallen into a trance watching that all over again. I want food, all those. Food coma. Food coma. It's a real thing. Did you try when you were out there that 14-inch corn dog with the cheese and the hot Cheetos? Oh, I have to go.
I mean, let's just say, it's sometimes <laughs> it's so frustrating when we do these food segments because we have to, you know, keep the show moving that you take a bite and you have to move on. You didn't get to enjoy it enough? Oh, I would have stayed in Dominic's mm. truck all afternoon and I would have eaten all the things. He's a good friend to have. He's a, a good guy friend to have. like that? Yeah, so go out to Biggie's, ask for Dominic, but Biggie's, it's right there on, like, the east side of the Astrodome. Okay. You can't miss it there. So yes. go check it out and have, and those fries with the caramel. Mm. Anyway, okay, so back to the radio, because yeah. one thing that you guys do want on the radio is obviously it's your job in the morning to help wake people up, right? Oh, yes, because 5 a.m., no one wants to see that time of day. Really? I know. Yeah, so you it's have to be early, on, it's happy. dark. Yeah, and so people are in traffic. Which people are in traffic, and so your job is to make them feel like they're not quite in traffic. Exactly. Like life is maybe Forget a little about better. It. Forget about the traffic. Mm -hmm. Are you like drinking coffee? How do you stay? You know what? I'm caffeine free, which is wild. I'm a green juicer and ice water. Swear by it. Chug the ice water first thing in the morning. Derek is going to change your How life. much ice water do you like chug? Like a big, like a Yeti. A full thing of it. So like yeah, 32 big. ounces yeah. of ice water. Ice water. Chug it. And down. that shocks you awake? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh dear, I'm Here kind of just am. hearing you talk about it. <laughs> and then the green juice, when does that come? Um, so right after I finish the water, so my stomach's ready for a little bit of something. Green juice, kale, celery, squeezed on lime. They deliver it to my front door. I drink it every morning. So you don't even have to get the blender out? No, I don't have time for that. 3.30, are you kidding me with the blender? So a my big... roommate would want to murder me. <laughs> <laughs> it would be horrible. <laughs> Here's my celery and more celery. No. Wow. Mm -mm. Okay, so that's that's a good tip. Yes, yeah, so we play a lot of games in the morning to get people, you know, excited. Yeah. And one of my favorite games that we play, we call it carpool karaoke, but I was kind of thinking that you and I could do it together. <laughs> Did you say karaoke? You know something about karaoke? Because I hate it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, first we're going to karaoke, and later in the show Actually, we're going to break down. I do hate karaoke so, because why? I want to be able to rehearse. You know what I mean? Like, no. I was always in the school plays, singing in church. My mom would play the piano. I would sing. I want to, like, rehearse and practice so it's great. There's no time for that, Derek. This is karaoke. Houston Life Edition. Are you ready? Okay, explain the rules. How does okay, it work? Okay, so when we played on the show, usually we have an artist coming in town. Say, if it was Cardi B tonight, we would have tickets for Cardi B, so we play a Cardi B song and you have to finish the next lyric in order to win your tickets. So people are stressed because they want to win these tickets. Finish the next lyric. I'm, I'm stressed because we're on live TV. What? It, it, I didn't know that. Are these all country <laughs> this songs? Is live? This live? <laughs> surprise. Are these yes. all country songs? Yeah, how do you, you listen to my show, right? Yes, of course, <laughs> I'm up at five. Yeah, uh, fine. Okay, so y why don't you start? Round one. Okay, usually we're not singing, <laughs> but I'm gonna do this. Okay. The first song. I believe this is by Brooks and Dunn, who you probably have seen just recently. Oh, I was at the Brooks and Dunn concert Rodeo. the other night. That's yep. right. Round one. Now, if you lose your one and only, there's only room here for the lonely. C can't you please sing to now, help? Now, if you lose your one and only, there's always, always room, room here for, for the lonely. And I have no idea what comes next. I really don't. The name? Do you know the name of that song? Oh, um, Neon Moon. Finally. Neon I don't Moon. know. A, a little birdie might have told me that you didn't Neon know Moon. that was Neon Moon. Derek, what did you think that song was called? Okay, so I thought the song was called Neon Boots, which is a club. It's a bar here. <laughs> it's a bar. Katie's la or everyone's laughing here. I, okay, I, I thought it they were singing Neon Boots. Mm -hmm. I was like, that song, that's so sweet. They're yeah. singing about the right answer Western bar in Houston. Is neon nice. Moon. To watch your broken dreams neon dance in and out of the beams of the Neon Moon. I do love the song. I just don't know uh, the lyrics very well, clearly. Clearly. Okay, um, my turn. Oh, gosh. You, fin you finish this. Okay, I'm ready. Islands in the stream, that is what we are. No one in between, how can we be wrong? Run away with me to another place, and we'll we rely, rely on, on each, each other. other. Uh, 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 uh. All right, that Thank was you. good. I'm available for karaoke, but I have to be in bed by 9 p.m. Okay, very nice. I Let's do I another round. Say. Okay, your one turn. point me, zero points Derek, if you're keeping track. Another country song, because that's that what I know. Very nice. <laughs> All of my exes live in Texas. And Texas is a place I'd nearly love to be. You gotta sing it though, okay. because I okay. feel like, again, I'm kinda new to country music, right. folks. Be nice. All my exes live in Texas. <laughs> and Texas is a place I'd nearly love to be. I don't 
don't think that sounds anything like the original, well, does you're it? you're wrong. I thought it was spot on. <laughs> and I'm tone awesome. You know what? I really don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I really don't know. Give me a hint. All my exes live, live in, in Texas. Texas. And that's why I hang my hat in Tennessee. Oh, in Tennessee. Okay. We're going to practice a little more We're going to practice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, last round. Oh, I get another one to show you. This is a pretty easy done. one. This was the first country music song I really ever heard. That's I think. special. I grew up in Salt Lake. I mean, okay. we didn't listen to country music, but in sixth grade, mm -hmm. uh, my best friend Trent Lloyd, his mom loved Pam Tillis. <laughs> I'm nervous. Maybe it was Memphis. Maybe it was Southern Summer Nights. <laughs> it was maybe it was you. Maybe it was me. But, but it, it sure, sure felt right. right. There you go. Okay, you got closer wow. than I did. I don't know. I think, am There's I the, the winner? Thunder. You are. Oh. We do better. <laughs> we can do better than that. Derek, you're a winner. Mo, you're definitely the winner. That was fantastic. Okay. This is what we do on the show. George Mo, Cowboy Dave, the morning bull. Every morning. Okay, I got to start calling Keeping in. You awake. I'll be the weirdo sitting on uh, 59 Freeway. Not knowing okay. the lyrics. And everyone in their car <laughs> screaming. Why doesn't he know that song? Oh, no, please don't send me hate mail because I didn't know those songs. Okay, folks, but do grab your sunglasses because after the break, we're going to go behind the scenes at a local neon shop that is extra super busy right now. How they'll be grabbing your attention at this year's Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo right after this. Welcome back. Rodeo affects so many local businesses, including one you might not expect. Yes, it's called True Colors Neon, and they have been busy at work creating custom signs for rodeo this year and for the past 27 years. Here's a look at what it takes to keep Houston lit. My name's Dan Dobelman. I'm owner and operator of True Colors Neon. Uh, technically, I'm a glass bender by trade. It takes some practice to, to learn how to bend neon. Uh, usually uh, about a year of practice before people start to get good at it. It's similar to learning how to play a guitar. You know, you practice it every day. After about a year, you can, you can uh, play something that people might want to listen to. If you like getting cut and burned and shocked, this neon is the perfect trade for you. Everybody's working on the deadline of getting set up, especially for the barbecue cook-off. Uh, we do numerous signs for that, for that event. So it is the busiest time of year, is usually February and December. Uh, everybody's a mad scramble to get everything set up and, and looking right. So the guys that have bought signs for me, you can see their place way down the road and it's easy to get to them. So we use two kind of fires here. We'll use a, uh, a cannon fire. Just, we use this for uh, welds, splices, and sharp bends. And then we will use uh, what we call a ribbon burner. This is for large sweeping arches, circles and waves type shapes. Once the pull down process is complete to clean out the tube, we place in the neon gas, which will give it its color. What I like about it most is people come to us and bring us their ideals and being able to take a, a, a sketch or just something somebody verbally tells, tells me and, and be able to make a nice layout and then turn that into a nice sign. It, it's what I enjoy the most. Oh my gosh, I want one of every single style. I'm thinking about one for the wedding. <laughs> yeah, it's like a backdrop so people can take their pictures You know what, it. that would be super They're cool. So you do cool. it as a photo booth. Yes. Well, we got so lucky because they created a custom sign for us here at Houston Life. Look at this design process. So uh, you can see the logo on this computer, and then, uh, you know, it's after it's printed on a Sharpie printer, the glass is bent there with a the torch. That's incredible. Yeah, then electrodes are added to the tubes. The air inside is vacuumed out. Wow, that is quite a process. In and art, right? In art form, for sure. And after all that work, it turns into a lovely work of art. Look at your logo perfectly. We are so official I now. I love it. We'll, find it. we'll have to find a good home for it here in Studio Where will B. we put it? Somewhere where we can take our picture in front of it, hopefully. Okay. Hey, after the break, we get to meet our pet of the week. Okay. I am so excited this cutie is ready to find a new loving home. So adorable. But before we get to this adorable little dog, if you don't have your weekend planned out just yet, we've got you covered. Tonight, Discovery Greens Outdoor Roller Rink returns. All the fun will start at 6 p.m. and roll through 10 p.m. Tickets to skate start at just 10 bucks. You can expect roller derby demos, live music, so much more. Plus, it's one of the most beautiful spots in the city. We'll be right back.
Today's Pet of the Week is brought to you by the Houston SPCA, but first, a successful adoption story. Cassie and Ty recently took a trip to the Houston SPCA to see the adorable adoptable animals. Oh there. my goodness, they knew they wanted to adopt, but they weren't exactly sure what they had in mind. So the couple happened to pass by Amber and her little puppy face, which is begging <laughs> oh, to be kissed. Look at that, they spent some time playing with her and knew immediately they couldn't leave without her. Amber had been found on the street and brought to the Houston SPCA so she could find a loving home. Uh, from the looks of things, she was quite successful. The five-month-old pup is growing like a weed and enjoying the sweet life with her new family. And speaking of sweet, Lisa Tyna with the Houston SBCA joins us now with our pet of the week, Jade. Lisa, welcome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I decided I needed to bring something a little larger than our, oh, well, excuse me, than our <laughs> usual fare, and she's making me pay for it. Um, this gorgeous girl, she is a purebred Australian cattle dog, otherwise known as a blue healer, um, and she is sweet as can be. Like, this dog is a perfect specimen. She's a little bit nervous, a little bit intimidated by this new place, but she's so loving. She would just make a great family pet. Oh my. She's gorgeous. One of my best friends has a blue healer, and the dog has been so great. What kind of home do you imagine she'd be good in? You know, she she particularly would probably do well in a little bit of a quieter home, and a lot mm -hmm. of times people with little kids run into trouble when you have a herding breed dog because they will herd your children. Oh, oh um, she was that thing sounds or perfect. A thing. <laughs> yes, so these Free babies. <laughs> right? These dogs are bred to chase and herd cattle, and they do so by nipping at their heels, which is why they're called a healer. So they will nip at your children's heels lovingly, of course. Is that the same with other dogs? They, they will herd it. Okay. <laughs> they, they so will. maybe a home without another She And she's, she's lived with dogs, though, mm -hmm. so she, it might make her feel more confident and comfortable. Mm -hmm. you and she's know. had sort of a rough start to she life, too, right? Has. You got her from a cruelty case. Yes. She was part of a pretty terrible abandonment case. They'd been there for a while, and they were all really, really underweight and covered in parasites, and they had intestinal parasites she's put on almost 10 pounds she's still got a little more weight to go um, but she's healthy otherwise and she's just such a wonderful little dog well and it, as always I mean the animals that you guys put up for adoption they have a clean bill of health yeah. so she's ready she's, she's ready to adopt today yes she's spayed she's microchipped she's fully vaccinated she's just waiting for you to come and fall in love oh my god already fell in love <laughs> she is adorable well if you want her as with all of our adoptable pets on Houston life if you want this dog you better drive yourself down yes. there and stand in line yes first uh, come first serve thank you so much Lisa for stopping by and Jade she's good luck smiling finding for the home. camera yeah. as always you can visit uh, the Houston Houston SPCA's website, HoustonSPCA.org, if you would like to learn more. And if you haven't had a chance this weekend, Derek, Mamma Mia! The Musical at Theater Under the Stars, this weekend is the last time to watch. Mm. Tickets are at just $30, and the production starts tonight at 8 p.m. They have two shows tomorrow, 2 and 8 p.m., and then Sunday at 2 p.m. You don't want to miss it. We will be right back. Welcome back. Home buying and selling season is right around the corner, and many buyers don't know what to expect when they start their own home hunt. That's why real estate expert Alex Duve is joining us now with everything you need to know before your big purchase. Welcome, Alex. Glad to be here. Thanks for being here. Okay, this is like the season to be buying and selling homes, right? It is. What is the market like here in the Houston area? We're, we're really coming to the busy season right now in the next kind of 30, 60 days, and we had a roller coaster ride last year. I mean, went up really fast, Q4 really slowed down. It looks like we're probably gonna see 4% appreciation this year, something like that. So good news if you own a home. Hey. Obviously it's, it's tougher to buy a house than it was you know, five years ago in Texas, but uh, it looks like it's gonna be a pretty good year on the whole, particularly because mortgage interest rates aren't going up and up and up like Great we were news. scared of late last year. Right. Okay, so regardless of someone's situation, Alex, like let's say you're a current homeowner or even a first time buyer, what are some of the things we need to really consider about our own situations before we jump in and make a move? Yeah, you know, I think one thing that's always forgotten is that most people are selling their home when they're buying a home. And so I always like to say, I think for most people, the first step should be get a value for your home because most people are taking that cash that they they net when they sell their home to buy the next home and right. so how do you do that well a great place to start is online there are a lot of free resources now zillow has their zestimate that that everyone likes you know everyone likes oh, to look at right on right my everyone and wants yeah. to know and that's not a perfect number i mean it's usually about five percent off nationwide so that's not perfect uh, but a great step is to talk to a real estate agent to get a free valuation. 
You could always get an appraisal. You generally have to pay $250, $350 for that. An agent's going to give you a free professional opinion of what the value of your home is. That'll help you home in on the actual value as opposed to just an online estimate. But uh, once you know that, then you're a little bit better equipped to know how much money you're going to have when you go buy a house if you have to sell yours first. That's the big deal, knowing what you can afford totally. when it's time, right? So is there a professional that can kind of give you an idea of where you should be looking to buy? Yeah, I mean, the, the reality is today, 95% of people are looking online. So it's you so look easy. on Zillow you all the time. You have the apps on your phone. Who doesn't like doing that, right? right. So you're, you're browsing a lot. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes time to actually go buy, the, the first step really, I think, everyone's browsing, mm -hmm. but you need to get pre-approved for mortgage. Most people are looking for, or are going to be using a mortgage when they buy a house. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's really dangerous these days because you, you always see the multi-million dollar houses and who doesn't want to go look at those, right? right. But unfortunately, most mm -hmm. of us can't afford those. And so when you get pre-approved, that kind of puts constraints around your, your search. So you know what price point to look for. And the real problem is uh, if, if you're putting in offers and you don't have that mortgage pre-approval, a lot of times sellers won't even give you the time of day. And so you can really get a lot of heartbreak. We see this all the time where you put in an offer, you lose the house to someone else who has cash or who has a pre-approval in hand. And so you, you fall in love with the house and then it gets yanked out from under you. So don't forget the mortgage as as kind of unfun as that part is. Reality. It's reality. Yeah. Well, and for a lot of first time buyers, this can seem daunting. Like what you just explained can seem daunting. Yeah. But the pre-approval, the reality is if you're shopping for a home, a pre-approval can be super fast if you call your bank or a lender mm -hmm. and say, hey, based on my income and my debt and all of this, how much can I afford, essentially? They give you a letter, and that's what you would hand to well, the and, seller, and the right? The great news for consumers these days is that there are so many online portals to find out what the best rate is. Uh, it, it used to not be that way, particularly prior to the Internet, but you can go online to uh, any number of portals. Just do a Google search, mortgages. Uh, be careful when you enter your, your information on those. You tend to just get hounded. All so the emails. Be care you all get a lot of emails. Yes but it's very transparent these days. Alex, it's also really important that you find an agent that you kind of love and click with. Do you have any advice for someone trying to pick someone? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think there, there are a few things. Uh, first is everyone knows a real estate agent. Everyone has a friend or an Or my mom's an uncle's aunt, twice yeah, removed. Exactly, yes. right. Mm -hmm. Kid soccer coach, mm -hmm. whatever know. it is. Mm -hmm. And I think it's easy to get wrapped up in the emotion of buying a home. And, and it's undoubtedly a fun, emotional time. But keep in mind, it's someone you're hiring to, to do a job for you. And you're paying them a lot of money. So really do your research, I think, on the front end. It behooves you as a consumer, talk to several different agents just to get multiple opinions as to how to approach the market currently. Uh, and the other thing is there are a lot of resources these days for actually getting cash back when you buy a house. So there are a lot of companies like MyIndoor.com. Uh, you, you might have heard of companies like HomeBay and, and a lot of them out there. Do a research, do Google, uh, Google search. Uh, look for, for rebates on commissions. And there are a lot of ways to save thousands of dollars these days as a consumer. But, but keep in mind that your, your agent's generally getting 3% mm -hmm. uh, of the purchase price. So they're getting paid a lot of money by you. So they are, they are performing a service for you. Really make sure that you're, you're vetting them appropriately. Yeah. So much to think about. I say don't use a friend. I've had bad experiences. You, very quickly. You hear those stories. <laughs> I know, and it's truth. Uh, we're almost out of time, but very quickly, if you're making an offer and closing, if you could just briefly describe this process, especially for first-time buyers, because this, again, can seem very confusing. That, that's where the magic turns into reality, right? Where you actually sign a contract, you have your mortgage, and when you put an offer in, your, your agent's generally going to do or should do a valuation of your home. So just like when you're selling your home, when you're buying a home, you also need to do a valuation because you need to know what the offer price should be. It's, it's very often different than what the list price is. You're going to sign a contract. You're going to put that offer in. Hopefully the seller accepts that offer. And then, you, then that's when the real work starts. That's when you have to get the home inspected. You have to go through a lot of things like that. Your agent's going to walk you through all those mm -hmm. pieces. We need a good agent. We Alex, do. you're a plethora <laughs> of knowledge. Thank you so much for being Fun here. Fun to be here. Yes. All right. And still ahead on Houston Life, from the streets to the world stage, we're going to meet some local influencers who are behind a movement to take break dancing to, get this, the Olympics. We'll break down their big moves coming up. But first, a free family-friendly event everyone will love. It's Family Gras down on the island. It's happening this Sunday, starting at noon, expect parades, of, uh, floats, clowns, mini cars, all part of Galveston's annual Mardi Gras celebration. We'll be right back.
Hip hop dance is getting more than just street cred these days. Break dancing or breaking could soon be considered an Olympic sport. You guys, we are so lucky to have Houston's own B boy, Moy Rivas. He's been championing the cause and using his influence to inspire the next generation of B boys and B girls. That's hey, right. Moy. How you guys doing? Thank you for having Great. me on the show. Okay, so this idea of it going to the Olympics, this is more than just a dream. Like, this could actually happen, right? Yeah, this is a big deal. Um, you know, currently the IOC is uh, in the process of moving, breaking into the Summer Olympics in Paris 2024. So this is a positive step moving forward for our community and our culture. That's soon. And hu it's huge, you know, because breaking comes from the streets. And so now with it, you know, having the Olympic committee behind it just increases the value of what we do on just on so many different levels. It increases the visibility of the Olympics too, I would Ex imagine. Exactly. Because, uh, it would attract a younger a whole audience, different group right? Of yeah, and, and it, I think it's one of the reasons why the Olympics and the IOC is really trying to move in that direction because they're trying to widen their, their uh, viewership as well by targeting a younger demographic. So uh, I think it's a great move uh, for them, but a much bigger move for us. And so. it's already, breakdancing is already part of the Youth Olympic Games. Yeah, so uh, last October I was part of, you know, one of the, as one of the head judges for judging uh, the uh, Olympics uh, in Buenos Aires this past time, and that's the first time breaking has been part of uh, the Olympics as well. So a uh, huge step for all of us, and I think that was a great step moving forward. I love looking at at these photos, by the way. <laughs> I mean, judging. talk about a dream come true. Let's yeah. talk a little bit about your history because you have more than 20 years of experience right, as a right. professional dancer. Yes. You grew up here in Houston in what yes. you describe as sort of a rough neighborhood. Yeah, I grew up in South Southeast Houston where, you know, things kind of, you know, could have went any single direction, but uh, just fell in love with dance and it really changed my life. Uh, I really found a, a good uh, it gave me a good vibe, a good feeling, and a good positive outlet, uh, you know, using dance to take me to a different level. And so uh, just started learning more and more about it and, you know, dug into it, took a deep dive, and now we're here 20 years later and influencing people worldwide. So I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic about this whole ordeal, you know. And Houston is so lucky to have you. You've also started... Um uh, break Free Hip Hop School. Tell That's us correct. about that. Yeah, so I founded Break Free in 2011 with the idea of just, you know, providing a safe haven for youth. You know, uh, what we believe is if, if hip hop can do it for us, it could be done for them. And so, uh, in so many ways, I feel like I don't deserve to be where I'm at, but just through hard work, commitment, and loyalty, and believing in, in your art, you know, it can take you around the world. You know, I've been to 64 different countries, all expenses paid, getting paid. And so if I could do it, we believe they can do it too. And so that's why Break Free exists today. That's incredible, inspiring so many young people. I love watching <laughs> this video. They're having a blast. Yeah. Having such a great time. We did a story about you guys a while right, back. Right, yeah, I remember, and we're very thankful for that. So, but you know, now the story's much bigger. You were talking about Olympics. breaking in the Olympics, Paris I mean, 2024. Awesome. I mean, we want everybody to remember that because we want everybody to be pushing for this because what once was a street dance is now a global dance, so uh, we're very excited about it. It's incredible, and you guys have a spring break camp. Yeah, right? we have a spring break com uh, camp that's running uh, in the next couple weeks, and so uh, all the information is available on our website, breakfreehouston.com. So if anybody is interested, you know, make sure to visit breakfreehouston.com. What's the age the details. group for that? It's ages seven on up. Like, like me and Derek. Anybody. So, what are you doing if you're Parker? between uh, seven on <laughs> up, you guys can definitely j jump in and ride that wave with us. So okay. Think we're going to think about it. We All right. Might be cool. terrible. <laughs> but listen, we're in for such a treat because we've got two of Moy's champion students in Studio B yes. right now. Yes. Their names are Isaiah Roman and Sota Omi. Both are hoping to represent the sport at those Olympics for in sure. 2024. Yeah. So, uh, enough chatting. Why don't we see some Let's of your see, cool moves, guys? Go for it. <laughs>
to Omi. Guys, wow, that is so impressive. I'm confused where we're starting. Like, that was professional. Okay, and how long, <laughs> Isaiah, have you been dancing? I've been dancing since the age of seven. Since the age of seven? Seven years old, yes, sir. Does it, does it, is it all fun or does it feel like work no, to you? No, it's fun. It's, it's very fun. It's something that I love to do. It's something that I'm, like, very obsessed about. So, like, every day I'm always practicing. Always practicing, always teaching, so I love to do it. That beat is always in the blood. <laughs> and so, so, you're from Japan? Yes. How long have you been in Houston? Uh, almost one year. Almost one year, and you came specifically to train with Moy, is yes. that right? Yes, I, I came here, meet him. Yeah. And you knew, and you knew it was a match made in heaven. <laughs> you guys are also um, helping out at the school, right? Yes. So you're the teachers that the kids are getting to mm -hmm. meet. What's, where's something like the kids are gonna start with? So they start with basic movements, so a basic like b-boy stance, okay. how to do top rock, how to intro. You know, you look a little interested. Okay. I mean, I'm, I wanna know more. Yeah, so we just teach all the basics, something that they can do from the ground up, start from beginning to finish, and they know how to do it on their own, top rock go down footwork and freeze they know all, they, they, they learn all of it ground up what's amazing is it, it's almost like speaking another language because there are so many terms right and I think one <laughs> of the challenges seems like when you're break dancing all parts of your body seem to be going in different directions but they're working together at the same time yeah it's a, it's a difficult movement so that's why it's a it's a blessing for it to just be in the Olympics and have an official platform we're gonna keep our fingers crossed here Isaiah I'm gonna give you this microphone oh. and why don't you guys show us a few moves Mo are you up for this I'm feeling ready <laughs> Okay, yeah, so sure. teach us so. some of the basics. So, first off, you're a B-boy and you're a B-girl. B-girl, right? yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so when you guys come up on the floor, always hit your B-boy, B-girl stance. Yeah, fresh as possible. Yeah, there we go. I know we... Fresh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. you look fresh, okay? <laughs> Pretty late. So after you hit your B-boy stance, this is where the fun begins. You start from top right. So all you're gonna do is this. Cross one, other way, cross two, boom. Now, oh, okay. jump cross. Oh my. Spin down. Nod your head. All right, I think we got it, guys. Yeah, we We're go. gonna keep working on this. <laughs> we do have a link, by the way, up on our website to connect you with Break Free Hip Hop School. Thanks, guys. We appreciate you guys. Thanks for having us. And if everybody watching can just hashtag Paris 2024. Breaking is moving into the Olympics. Break Free Hip Hop School. We'll be right back. Great job, guys. Monday on Houston Life, your gala season survival guide. From when to approach someone at an event to how to gracefully leave a conversation, techniques that will help you own the social scene. And don't forget to enter our Scramble for Boots contest. We've partnered with Justin Boots. We're giving away three pairs of boots, one per week for the next three weeks, and we'll be announcing the first winner on Monday's show. If you'd like to enter, just visit our website, houstonlife.tv, click the Scramble for Boots contest link, and enter your info. Good luck.